you, you, I didn't have you last semester. Oh, good. Oh, you. Did I have you? Okay, great. Great, good. Because I think the, I had you, though. I can't, in, in, the, in front of Greg. Well, and I know I had you, too, right? Last semester. Yeah. I, I'm going to call him up right now. I won't. I won't post your pictures on the thing. I gotta get. I won't do that to you again. But I can. Because I gotta load a bunch of stuff here, and. Oh, I forgot to do Blackboard UMKC. Oh, the hell. Let me just get it. I'm also going to call it Black Pathway. Yeah. Oh, keep talking among yourselves. We're, we're now not, I'm going to get, they've added all these different keys to Blackboard too. Okay. And then I've got to get a bunch of, oh. Good, we got that done. What else did I, oh, did I bring my notebook so I can. They they weren't there, and the they they're there at the bookstore. Yeah. Then yes, I know about them. They're they're at the uh, they're in the bookstore, for and they're the same thing for the 250 class too. 220 and 250 labs are the same, and I've got one young lady who's kind of like enrolled in this class, but because of things that we had to do to admin administratively. Um, she's separate, so I hope she has her. Is Jackie here? I think that was that. Okay, you're 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 separate. You're you're in this, um, but everything will be okay. You'll you'll be fine. Um, sure, uh, he says. All right. Let me get this figured out here. All right, Naomi's here. Alexander, that's why I couldn't remember. You. Now I got it. Okay, good, 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 good. Heather's and Brenda came in. Melissa's here. Jared Brunk, Jared here, right there. Okay. Um, James is here. Uh, Stephanie. Sh oh, you're Stephanie. Okay, there we go. Um, William Crooks, okay, and you're what? All right, now it's also Keith Evans. Did I have you last semester? Uh, two semesters ago. Oh, okay, all right, um, good. That's good for you because I've actually learned this material much better now. So um, David's here. Is Megan here? Here, I didn't see Megan. She's not here. Uh, Marcus is here. Uh, Justin Johnson. Didn't I see him? Yeah, okay. And Jonathan Lucchese, he's not here yet. Um, Rachel Luptak. Okay, that's Rachel. Did I pronounce that? Did I butcher your last name? 
Oh, okay, loop talk. Okay. Dr. Froble would have gotten it right. But anyway, and Thomas is here, and Jared Norman. That, okay. Did I have you in the evening class? Uh, no, I was last semester. Last semester in the afternoon? Okay, that's right. Jared and Brittany Owens. Could have sworn. Oh, there she is. Yes. Right. Now you skipped a semester. Now you're joining, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and your foot's all healed. Are you still on the softball team? Uh -huh. Okay. All right, Jesse and Brianne's here. Uh, David Smith. Yeah. Dave. Oh, there he is. All right. I didn't have you last semester, did I? No. I've never had you before. Never. Okay, we've never met before. All right, good. Greg's here, and Danny Swartzlander. There he is. Have, have you had me before? Okay. All right. Emily Taylor. There's Emily. And you, we haven't had each other before, right? Okay. Um, that's kind of a weird phrase. But anyway, um, Eric Weaver. Eric's not here yet. And I met Jody Williams Sipes. Yep, there she is. And Catherine. I know Catherine as she had the highest score on the final last semester. All right, now, um, so that's good. Now, what else did I want to load here? Other stuff. New window. Okay, let's just go through the syllabus and then things will hit me. Um, I've loaded Blackboard. I looked at the pathway. Kind of took attendance. I won't take attendance. Um, I just kind of wanted to get a feel for remember some names. Like I couldn't remember Alexander. I was going, I know her. I know that young lady. And I couldn't remember her name. All right. And um, I like to get to know everybody too before class starts. Now, we are doing something new this semester. Um, this class will not be offered online. However, if you miss a lecture, if you miss a lecture, um, you can, and I'm testing our cameraman now as I'm moving back and forth. Um, if you miss a lecture, you can go to YouTube University and go find UMKC, which will be on there, and you can view the lecture online. So now, Wednesday, no one will be here. <laughs> oh, well. But that's the way I, I think. Dr. Rubble, when will we get them loaded on, when will, can V-Shell upload these, do you think? As soon as possible. So, today. Oh, okay. All right. So they'll, so they'll be there. All right. Um, so there you go. There's, a, there's an option for you. I know if um, you can't um, make it or, or just go, or, uh, especially on like Friday when you're just not feeling it because you don't have a lab right afterwards. By the way, labs start Wednesday, I believe. Right? Correct? Yeah. Lab, labs will, your lab will start Wednesday. All right. Let's go through this syllabus for, um, oh, <laughs> Okay. There we go. Now we're going to kill the. Is that on? Do we have a. Do we have. Yeah. No, the, but do, is my camera on? No. Now is it on? Yeah. All right. You just have to be aggressive with it. I'm walking a little slow. Did the Hospital Hill on Saturday. I just did the 10K, but I beat my 77-year-old dad, so I'm feeling good, feeling kind of froggy about that. But only by 10 minutes or so, so he was right behind. He was on my, uh-oh. Is that too dark? No? Okay, that just seemed kind of like you can't see it. What? Oh. Yeah. Is that washing that out? Can you all see the screen yeah. as we go through the syllabus? All right. This is the Bueller, anyone, Bueller part of the lecture as we go through the syllabus. All right. Um, I'm Bob Briggs, and this is Physics 220. If you've signed up for Physics 210, you're wrong. All right. You need to be, at that, that one starts at 2 o'clock. Oh, there we go. All right. And um, now I want to turn on, but that's all right. We'll just leave. Uh, textbook is good old Cutnell and Johnson, volume two, and we'll talk about the whole Wiley Plus thing here in a minute um, for those of you that are new to the course. I notice some of you, I went to Wiley Plus, and some of you have already loaded yourself on there. I was impressed, okay? 
So I know that the system works, okay? I know that it works. And you all didn't have to, those of you that had me last semester didn't have to pay extra money, right? You're already there, okay. So you probably didn't buy your textbook either, volume two textbook either, did you? Okay, that'll work, that'll be fine. All right, um, this is general physics two, and we'll cover about chapters 18 through 28 of the text. I always want to try and get to quantum mechanics just so that you have um, a brief overview of probably um, the most influential branch of physics over the, for the 20th century. If it wasn't for quantum mechanics, we wouldn't have our iPhones and iPods and all that kind of stuff. But um, we get bogged down with the electricity and magnetism, it's, and I can never get there for some reason. All right? And general physics one and two is a two semester. We've already been through this. Um, the course will present a conceptual framework and problem solving skills that allow students to understand a wide range of phenomena from uh, a balloon rubbed on a wool sweater, why it sticks to the wall, to the occurrence of a rainbow, um, and why you can't exceed the speed of light. And that's basically because Einstein said so, all right? And if you have a problem like that, take it up with him. But anyway, uh, and basically physics is a study of how Mother Nature works. All right, now, what you really came to learn today, how am I gonna be graded, all right? Homework assignments are 25%, your lab is 25%, and I'm just going to clear up all misconceptions and any questions right now on lab. We are not chemistry, we are not biology, we are physics, we don't drop labs, okay? So no labs are dropped, that's always a question I get because I think chemistry drops one or two or something like that. We don't, we don't drop any labs, all right? Um, and so don't try and butter up your TA down there teaching you lab because sometimes they, they bend with the wind. But anyway, um, and we'll have in-class group exams. This is going to be, come on in, John. Enter, enter. Okay, we're going to have in-class group exams. How bizarre. All right, we're going to try it, at least the first one. Okay, in other words, I want you to learn the material. All right, and so how those will work, I'll get to those in a second, how they'll work. Um, and we will have daily quizzes. In fact, we're going to take a quiz today, all right? And then, in fact, after I get done talking here, we're going to take a quiz. And when, then what, we're going to lecture for a little bit, then we're going to take the same quiz again and see how we did. Okay, make sure we get it right. And then you'll turn those in, and um, uh, there'll be multiple choice, so there's no partial credit or anything, and you'll be, and we'll just do daily quizzes. And, and I'll get to those in a minute because you're going, wait a minute. That means I've got to be here every day. Uh -huh. um, but you'll be able to drop a few of them so when things come up. All right. So let's roll through this. Uh, grading scale. There's the grading scale. Um, and it's on the syllabus. You get a lot of questions on that. Oh, the one thing I forgot to look up was uh, when the final is. And I'll tell you when the final is. It's easy for summer school. It's the last day of class. That's in, during that class period, I think. So, so that'll be, and you won't have lab, so it's that Friday is the final. But um, there's really not a final in this class, and, and we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, homework. Homework, 25% of your grade. Let me roll this back up here. We will do homework in that newfangled way, all right, using Wiley Plus. Those of you are very familiar now with Wiley Plus know that it can be a little persnickety sometimes. But I've taken off the, the significant digit thing, and you get plus or minus 10% if you're within the right answer. And I think that'll work a lot better. Okay, if you're within plus or minus 10%, you know, that's, that's much better than had to be three significant digits type thing. But I do practice having your answers in three sig figs. Okay, um, you will be allowed one dropped assignment. Just get in your mind that each week homework is due. Actually, what I'm, what I'm doing is I, I've got a trial run. I want you all to get on it. And I want you, I've assigned the first five problems. And they will be, they'll be late if, they're not, if you don't have them done by Wednesday by the time class starts. I'm just giving you four, four problems and one extra credit problem, problem 19. So you've got four problems to do. Okay? And, we're, and we'll learn how to do them today. So, so they'll be a piece of cake. So, but the point of that is to get you logged on the Wiley Plus, have you do four assignments, so you get used to it. For those of you that are new, 
They haven't done it before. We'll go through the steps of how to do that here in a minute. And then um, you'll be good. And I'll show you what Wiley Plus looks like when you're all logged in and everything else. Okay, now in-class group exams. This is, this is my little brainchild that will probably blow up in my face, but we'll try it anyway. Um, every Monday, not including today, but every Monday. I, picked them up. I was going to have them on Fridays, but I thought, no, I, I understand things. There will be people need to get away for weddings and things like that on a Friday, and you may not be able to make it and stuff like that. So I thought, well, Mondays will, will work. Or maybe we might change it. Um, not including the first one. The 45 minutes, class, 45 minutes of class will be spent doing in-class open book group problems. Okay? And I'll assign the groups just randomly. All right? So, but, well, the first one, I'm going to let you all pick your own. You'll work three to four. There's 30 of you. So we can break down into 10 little groups of three. Piece of cake. You work the problems together, you put three names on the thing and turn it in, okay? And then that way, hopefully you've learned the material. I want you to relax. It's summer. This, this material can be tricky, but I want you to relax and, and, and um, learn it that way in kind of a, kind of a low stakes um, type environment, okay? And then um, labs be 25% of your grade. And remember, I'm the instructor. I'm not the lab instructor. Labs are like windows to me. I don't do them. All right? Okay? So if you have lab questions, I might be able to steer you in the right direction here and there. But one of these days, one of these semesters, I'm actually going to sit through the lab so that I know what's going on in there. And I try and make sure that we keep up with the labs, but sometimes we get a little bit behind. All right? Now, daily quizzes. Yes, that's right. Daily quizzes. Every class period except Mondays, um, when we're taking the test, we'll have some sort of quiz at the end of class, or maybe at the beginning. And this means about 15 of them, and they won't be hard, but no makeups, all right, will be given. With that in mind, you can drop three, all right? So when you drop three, so choose wisely. I know you don't expect to get sick. I know you don't expect family members to need certain emergencies to come up. So. That means come to class because I'm, um, most of the quizzes I'll probably make up on the fly as we're doing it anyway. So anyway, all right, now, midterm and final, 0%. That's right, no midterm or final, all right? Midterms and finals during summer school are like Facebook and Twitter. Huge time sucks that are just annoying, all right? So we don't need to, we don't need to do um, midterms or finals. And now you know my opinion of Facebook and Twitter. All right. Okay. Extra credit opportunities will abound, as always. Okay. Uh, these opportunities can take on the flavor of uh, random, difficult problems, usually two to three points. Um, a trip to the UMKC Observatory atop Royal Hall each Friday night. It is clear. Five points and repeated visits are welcome. Okay. And, um, and how many of you took advantage of that last semester, that had me last semester? Those are pretty cool, right? When you go up there, they're, they're run by the Kansas City um, Astronomical Society. And um, I about said Astrological Society, but it's not, they're not palm readers up there. Um, and uh, they, they do a very good job. I'm going to actually try and make it this summer, too, for once, OK? Um, there are no colloquiums, for those of you that have sat through those during the summer, OK? Um, but extra credit points will be added to your exam scores, um, and you'll get 20 points max, okay? So if, so if you go to the observatory four times, boom, you've maxed out your extra credit, okay? And th that's 8 o'clock or sundown on Friday, I think, is when they start. Blackboard. Again, due to the random style of my teaching, and uh, Blackboard will be used. In other words, I think of things, and I want to get a hold of you. I send a lot of emails via um, getting you on Blackboard. Lecture notes are available on Blackboard. The uh, uh, Cutnell and Johnson provides slides for those of you that are new to the class, and I'm going to follow them today, okay, so that we kind of see how this goes. And... Um, what we'll do. 
So ac uh, academic dishonesty, um, I believe in treating all my students like the adults you are, and so I highly encourage you to work together, but your work is your work, and my course is designed with the idea that students won't cheat, though it would be very easy to do so on the homework and stuff like that. Uh, it just gets real ugly, real, but if you're working a group test, so we've kind of eliminated that little thing there. You know, I mean, there are ways you can cheat. You say, oh yeah, I went to the observatory. You know, and you didn't. Well, okay. But I also believe in the cheating karma bus. In other words, it'll come back and get you someday. All right, you're gonna step out on the street, wham. All right, okay, so. All right, so this is physics, and it's fun, darn it. And that's what we're gonna do. And I believe there will be tutoring available in the summer. Is there a tutor? Yeah, there is tutoring available in the summer downstairs in room 259. Um, uh, if you go into room 259, it's kind of like an episode out of Big Bang Theory on CBS. And um, there will be somebody in there to help you. Um, and uh, I believe that will probably start Wednesday or next week. Wednesday. I'll start Wednesday too. Okay. We've got to give Dr. Robo a chance to get all this all this TAs situated and stuff at the beginning of the semester. All right, so I'm going to turn on this backlight. When are there any questions over the uh, syllabus? Anything? Everything sounds good. It'll be. I think it'll be all right. We're, we'll try this group test thing. I, I last summer I did the final that way. Gave them this impossible final to do, and each group like took like two problems or something. And we did them all. And it was kind of fun. And they actually learned something, I think. I don't know. I think they were just thankful that the class was over. All right, now. So no questions on that. OK. So oh, oh, now you can see all my business. Now I'm trying to see what else we need. Oh, let's go to everybody's favorite now. Everybody's favorite, Wiley Plus. Let me call this up. Here, edit. I apologize for this. You're going to have to sit there and watch me. What am I doing? Oh, yeah. One go. It's not on there. So we'll go to Wiley. And so here's what it looks like. So those of you who have not done Wiley Plus before, um, let me turn off the lights again. That just seems so dark. OK, um, for those of you back there. All right, go to Wiley Plus. Now, some of you that had me last semester, this is bringing back bad memories, I know, and everything else. But I think I've got it figured out so that it won't be so bad. Um, and uh, so you just go to Wiley Plus, Google Wiley Plus, and go here. And for those of you um, who need to get access, who have not uh, had me before, you just go to get access. And it says register for your Wiley Plus course. You go there and you register. You buy it online if you want to. Or did how many of you have bought it already at the bookstore? Haven't bought it yet? Okay. You go, you buy it online. I think it's how much? Eighty dollars, maybe? Something like that. Okay. And some of you are going, all right, Brittany's already given me the look. She's going, hey, I just paid a hundred for the book. Now you're telling me I can get this thing and I don't need the book. Well, you can take the book back. Uh huh. Uh huh. Did we have Wiley Plus? Yes. Oh, it should work. I'm hoping it might work. So it might take part in yeah, yeah. For those of you who skipped, yeah, Marcus. I did that. It worked. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. All right. So those of you who like skipped a semester or something like that and have used Wiley Plus before, you should be good. Those of you who haven't, just go buy it online and then. The key is this. They're going to ask you, and I apologize for this little portion that I'm going to do here. Um, I'm going to have to go back here and go to New Tab again and go to Blackboard. Here we go. There we are. Oh, that wasn't bad. Okay, and come out here to Summer School. And in the course information, there it is. There's you just paste that guy, okay? You paste that guy here in the course information part, and you 
splotch him up there, and boom, you'll, you'll be logged in. It'll take you through, and you'll have your code. After you've bought your code, you'll input your code, and it'll automatically put you in my course. Okay? It's a pretty amazing little thing. And if you have any problems, please don't hesitate to email me. I'm pretty good about answering emails, um, except on weekends. I'm kind of a little bit slow then. All right. Okay. So that's the way Wiley Plus will work. In fact, let me go back to that. You can hit Control C and go to a new tab here. This is like watching paint dry, isn't it? All right. Um, wait a minute. Oh. Sorry, I was, using them. I was using my Apple commands, my Mac commands for a real computer. And there you go. And then when you, you go to that, and then it says, hey, if you've already registered for this Wiley Plus course, please log in. You can go to login. If you have not already registered for this Wiley Plus course, but you bought the course, then you go here. Click register, and then I think it'll walk you through the, uh, let me see. I, I've never done this. Yada, 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 yada. Yada. How do I get out of this? Oh, thank you. I accept. Sure. Why not? And then you put in your email. It'll probably, if I put in my email, say you're already registered, but we'll try it anyway. Oh, you're going to know my email address. Well, that's mm -hmm. easy enough to figure. Oh, you need to know that anyway. You don't know my password. There we go. Oh, you've already created. OK, yeah, that's what I thought. All right, but anyway, you just go there, and then you'll be fine. And it will take you through the steps. And voila, you'll be on Wiley Plus. So now what I'm going to do is I'm the instructor. I'm going to log in here and give you a, a look. It is now 12.25. You all have been a, what did I do wrong? Oh, that's, that's not. That. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to do it this way. This is what yours will look like when you get on there. There it is. Hello, Bob Riggs. You are logged in to this. Now, here's what we're going to do. I want you to get out a sheet of paper. We're going to take a pre-quiz. like quiz. On, one, in the, on one column, on one side, say, this is my pre-quiz. Then we're going to have a lecture for a little bit. And then we're going to do the post-quiz. All right? We'll be the same questions, and you'll try it again. All right? So this will be your first quiz. And hopefully, everyone will get 100% by the time it's done. So what I'm going to do is, here, this is kind of actually not a bad thing here. This uh, read, study, practice portion, we'll go to chapter 18. This is where we're starting, electric forces and magnetic fields. And here's the self-assessment test. This is where last semester... This is where I took that midterm. This is where I got the questions. And some people had done this, but it was, it was a nightmare. But anyway, it did turn out not to hurt people too badly. All right, so here we go. Here's your first question. Question number one. You're going to get three of them. Question number one. Let's see what you know. Oh, you wouldn't know that one. Hold on. Don't worry about that one. Um, you don't know that one. This one. This is the one I want. Okay, each of three objects, you got objects A, B, and C here, all right? Each of three objects carries a charge, all right, as the drawing shows. Um, objects A and B attract each other, and objects C and A also attract each other. Which one of the following statements concerning B and C is true? Okay, would they attract each other? Would they repel each other? They neither attract nor repel each other. 
Um, this question cannot be answered without additional information. For those of you taking the MCAT, never pick that answer. All right. The answer's in there somewhere. It's kind of like, uh, what was that old show with Mulder and Scully? X-Files, yeah. The answer is in there somewhere. Right. Never pick the not enough information. Just test taking thing for you. All right? Okay. All right. Let's try another one. Let's try one more. A positively charged ebonite rod. Okay, so it's got a positive charge brought close to a small ball. The rod does not touch the ball, which is made from a conducting material. All right? The ball is electrically neutral. So I'm going to just throw out a quick question there. How much charge does the ball have? Zero charge. That's what electrically neutral means. Right. It's got zero charge. However, it's made out of copper or something like that so that it carries charge well. And we'll get into all that here in a minute. But I just kind of wanted to give you a pre, uh, prequel here. Okay. Um, and the rod does not touch the ball, which is made from a con The ball is electrically neutral. Which one of the following statements is true? The rod attracts the ball. The rod repels the ball. The rod neither attracts nor repels the ball. As the rod is brought closer to the ball, the force changes from an attractive force to a repulsive force. Hmm. Let's think about that one for a minute. All right, and let's do, we all got that one? Now let's try one more. You are so good looking. Okay, now, y'all see Seinfeld? No. Okay, each of the two identical objects carries a net charge. Okay, so they have a net charge. The objects are made from conducting material. One of them is tracted to a positively charged ebonite rod and the other is repelled by the rod, okay? After the objects are touched together, it's found that they are each repelled by the rod. Ooh, this is kind of hard. I don't know. What can be concluded about the initial charges on the object? Initially, both objects are positive, with both charges having the same magnitude. Initially, both objects are negative. Initially, one object is positive, one is negative, with the negative charge having a greater magnitude than the positive. Initially, one is positive and one is negative. With, well, I think we can throw out the first two. So we can just kind of deduce the first two aren't right. So it's down to either C or D there. So go ahead and pick one, and we'll come back to these um, after the lecture. We'll try it again. Okay. And I will, too. I'll take it, too. Okay. All right, yeah, that'll, that'll, <laughs> that'll end that. Now, so that's what, and then your Wiley Plus, here's your assignment. Oh, look at that, Endless Summer number one. There's your first assignment, and so you would come here and you go, okay, here's my first assignment. And I did allow you to, uh, you can print a blank copy in case you want to take it with you or something like that. You don't want to work at the uh, thing. Um, let's look at the full screen version. And problem two, there's, there's the problems. Now, one of the things is um, I don't have it change the numbers each time. But each one of you is going to have different numbers when you do the problems. All right? So. I want, to keep, I want you all to stay on top of this. That's why I'm having it be due, these one, two, three, four problems right here. Now, uh, problem number 19, I had to give it a value. It's extra credit. I gave it one point. But if you do it, and it, this one you do separately. Don't, you, you can do it on the computer. But um, yeah, you can do it on the computer. That'd be fine. And so if you have a one there or something and you got it right, then I'll give you um, three extra credit points. So that'll be off and running. It's kind of a fun problem to do. All right, so that's what, that's just, this is, for some of you that have had me before, this is all old hat, but I would just wanted the, the new kids on the block, pardon me, didn't mean to call you that.
what a horrible thing to call people a boy band. But um, for those of you who haven't had me before, that would work. All right. Now, what was I going to do next? Oh, let's talk. Let's do a lecture. Since we've already had a quiz, we better. We might as well learn about electricity and magnetism. So away we go. And I'm going to go to open documents. Go to my Q file. Hopefully it'll be there. I purposely loaded it today. Oh, you know what's going on here? I've got Dr. Robles' notes. I need to log off. I just started working on the computer, I just realized. Instead of, uh, what's that? I could log on? Oh, oh. Genius. Born every day. Thank you, Catherine. She saved you all. You're still having to have me sit through and go through punching things here. I apologize. I'll get through it through Blackboard. There we go, because I've loaded them to Blackboard. I've got the things there. So I don't have to log off. Where are we? Here we are. And you come here to course content, for those of you that are new to the course. And you'll see, oh, chapter slide. Go to the chapter slide. Da. Boom. Okay. <coughs> yes. All right. I am a happy man now. Now we'll go to the view slideshow. Should I turn off this light? Can you all see the take note? Hey, let's try this. Let's try this. What if I turn that on so now you can take notes? And we Will that show up on the thing? It's, we're still good. It, but this is kind of... Aha! I'm going to turn this off here. There. Are we still good? All right. Good. So now, that, now you can see to take notes and you can also um, see, the, see the thing. All right. So we're going to talk about electric forces today. Um, we've already talked a little bit about charge and all that and how charges move. Here's the, here's the big idea behind electricity and magnetism. All right. One of the things that I do here at UMKC is I'm the outreach coordinator, so sometimes we have uh, junior high kids coming through on field trips, and we show them some whiz-bang science stuff and take them upstairs, and they do some cool engineering stuff, get them excited about science. And I give them this semester basically in 15 minutes, all right, to seventh grade. We can boil it down to that. And here's the deal. Um, conductors are... Um, things where you have what are known as free electrons. All of you have had chemistry, right? So you all kind of got into that whole free electron thing in, in, your, in the quantum part of chemistry and all that. And so, you know, uh, things like copper and aluminum are the Southwest Airlines of the periodic table. Electrons are free to move about the wire and things like that, okay? And, um, but they're going to move when they feel a force, all right? Two things create that force for it. One is a pos positive charges and negative charges, okay? Positive charges and negative charges attract each other. Like charges repel each other. And moving magnetic fields, which we'll get into in Chapter 21, cause current also. And also, a moving current causes a magnetic field, all right? So if it's accelerating, if it's going in a circle, all right, it's got to have acceleration. Okay? All right. So, that's it. There you go. See you in the fall. You've just got electricity and magnetism. No, but, so that's kind of the big idea behind all of this. All right, but now, let's get into the numbers. Let's run the numbers, shall we, as they say on um, uh, KCUR in the morning. All right, uh, the electrical nature of matter is inherent in its atomic structure. These are some numbers, you know, these are our friends. We just get to know them, all right? The mass of a proton, mass of a nucleus. Now look at this electron. Look at the masses. 
He's a lot smaller, almost 10,000 times smaller than the neutrons. But this guy, electric charge, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That's as low as we, that's as small as we can get, all right? That's as small as we can get. In other, in other words, one of the words that we use that I'm starting to get used to using is electricity is quantized. In other words, how many, how many coulombs do we have? Three, four, 20 micro coulombs, those kinds of things, okay? All right, but a, but a uh, coulomb of charge, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19, that's how much charge a proton and a, an electron have. But what's the difference? Exactly. The proton has a positive charge and the electron has a negative charge. What about the neutron? He's neutral. For the most part. For the most part. Okay? All right. And that is the smallest amount of charge. And the other thing, too, is that um, the uh, amount of charge in the universe is constant. Which I think that's the next slide. No, it's not. All right. Uh, the amount of charge, that's the other big idea. The amount of charge in the universe is constant, okay? And then there's this thing out there, a proton, or a positively charged thing, has these electric fields going out this way, okay? And negative charged things have electric fields that are coming into them, all right? So the electric field is kind of like this big eHarmony.com thing out there, okay? In other words, you've got positive charges trying to look for their negative charges and they're going to get hooked up somehow, all right? Or they're going to feel forces and they're going to be attracted to each other and those types of things, all right? So, um, so the amount of force, and so that means the amount of charge, just like those of you, you all have had chemistry, know about thermodynamics, the amount of energy in the universe is constant. Same thing with the amount of charge in the universe is constant. It just changes form. It might change from one place to another, okay? All right, now, in nature, atoms are normally found. I don't need to read this to you, but anyway, so the amount of charge that we have, this is a quantized type thing, is the number of electrons or protons times the charge, okay? Number of electrons or protons times the charge, and that's like your first homework problem. It says if something has four coulombs of charge, how many electrons is that? It's a bunch. All right, a coulomb is a large charge. Didn't mean to rhyme, but it is, okay? A bolt of lightning is between 15 and 20 coulombs, all right? And, and that's a huge amount of electricity, okay? That's a lot of charge. So that's why when we deal in things in this class, you'll see, now this will be interesting if this comes up on the uh, thing. This is a test. I'm gonna write on this board real quick. When you see things like this, this little mu here, can you all see that? Jessica, you all, Marcus, good. Okay, a mu means micro. That's 10 to the negative six. You'll see that number a lot. You'll see a thing called micro coulombs, okay? Which means 10 to the negative six coulombs. So most of our coulombs will stay really small, okay? All right, okay, good. So we can figure out how much charge something has by, we take the number of electrons, like in this case, um, this one has four, you know, the amount of, oh, by the way, if this was a atom, <laughs> this is an atom, is this a positively or ch negatively charged atom or neutral? Yeah. Neutral, right, it's neutral. In other words, these guys are all paired up and fine. That's not, that's the good old Bohr model. It's not the standard model, but that's okay. All right. Now, how many, I thought I did something fancy to this. Shoot, this didn't work out. That's why I wanted it to. Because I wanted it to go, how many electrons are there in one coulomb of negative charge? I wanted you all to work it out. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, for this class, to kind of make it so it, it's not really painful for you to sit there for 75 minutes or Usually I go about 65 minutes and then the last 10 minutes is for homework help and things like that. Um, bring a calculator so that you can kind of work along with the, the problems and stuff like that. So it, it says how many um, electrons are there in one coulomb of negative charge? Well, 
The amount of charge, by the way, we use charge as Q. Just kind of get used to that. Just like we used, um, we call the force Newtons with a capital N. We use um, uh, N, or we use Q for coulombs for the amount of charge, and we use the variable Q. Okay? So N equals Q divided by E, and we wind up with 6.25 times 10 to the 18th. Um, that's a lot. Electrons make up one coulomb. It's not quite a mole, though. Not even close. All right. Now, charged objects. This is really kind of what your quiz was about today. All right. Charged objects and electric force. It's possible, like I said, the amount of charge that's out there is constant. It's conserved. Okay. But it is possible to transfer electric charge from one object to another. All right. The body that loses electrons has an excess positive charge, and while the body that gains the electrons has excess negative charge, which that all seems to make sense. Now, one thing that I like to do, here's one of my favorite things, just to kind of get you used to seeing some of these things. I'm going to go to this little website. Some people don't like this website, but I do, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it. And it's kind of fun to play with. It's P-H-E-T. This is the Physics FET, FET Simulations. This is developed out of the University of Colorado in Boulder. Um, and they're um, simulations of physical phenomena. And we're going to go to um, electricity and magnets and circuits and all that kind of stuff. And the first thing we're going to look at, I'm going to turn off this light too so it gets a little bit darker so you can really kind of see this. Let's look at, now this is in, first of all, I had a cat once until it started spraying furniture. I don't have that cat anymore. But anyway, um, uh, but one of the things I like to do with this poor cat was um, on a wintry day with my wool socks on, go walking across the carpet like this, and then touch the cat on the nose. All right? Now, what would happen, so now some of the cat lovers are going, well, no wonder he started spraying your furniture. All right? But uh, anyway, but actually he, he developed an illness and we had to, but anyway, I'm reliving it. No. Um, anyway, uh, what I, what, but what I'm doing is, I'm, with my wool socks, is I'm kicking up just like dust almost. I'm kicking up these uh, free electrons off the carpet, all right? And what they do is they form a shell. So we'll watch John Travoltage here, okay? We watch John Travoltage. And do we have the sound on here? I think we do. Okay, let's run him now. Hopefully they got the JavaScript in there. So if I log, okay, so here we go. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to rub the foot on the carpet. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I built up too much charge there. All right, so let's rub the, because I, I don't want to rub that much, just a little bit. There we go. And a bit, see, what the, see what the charges do? Um, now, charges do not like, look like little blue balls, all right? We'll, we'll, but what are they doing? They're distributing themselves out evenly over the surface. They go to the outside surface of the thing, of John Travolta here, okay? He's in a new movie now. It's, it's for those of us over 45, you know, it's the action-adventure movie for those of us over 45 with Denzel and John Travolta. Um, and see how they're kind of evenly distributed out here? Let's put a little bit more. And then when he brings his finger down here, he transfers the charge over um, to that. Now, uh, uh, another way to look at these things is this one. This might answer the question, one of our other quiz questions that we had, is we're going to look at the balloons and the sweater. All right? 
Okay, here we got a balloon. And what kind of charge does this balloon have? Yeah, it's neutral. It's neutrally charged. Okay, and the sweater looks like it's got some extra electrons on there. But I'm going to brush off onto the balloon just like, a, just like John Travolta did on his uh, thing. Now, what about the, okay, there, now it's kind of stuck over here because it's sticking to these positive charges, right, that have formed on the, now, what about the wall over here? How is it charged? Is it neutral, positive, or negative? Neutral. For those of you who said positive, I understand why those are not positive signs. Uh, red are, um, uh, the red ones going up here are actually protons. The, the red plus sign is hidden, but the negative sign is the electron. So, there, so it's neutrally charged. But what do you think is going to happen when I bring this negatively charged balloon over here to this wall? Yeah, the negative electrons are going to be pushed away. And what do we call that? Then all of a sudden we've got a row of positive charges here and negative charges on this side. That's, what, that's the fancy word we call it, polarization. Okay? It's going to happen to the wall. In other words, the electrons aren't going to really flow or go anywhere. Just those uh, molecules or these atoms right here are just going to kind of flip over choo, 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 like that. Okay? So let's move that balloon over, and you're going to see just like what Melissa said is going to happen. Here we go. See, you watching? Yeah, isn't that cool? Okay. I mean, this is a simulation, so they could just made that up. If that's what happened, but this is what happens. Okay. All right. So, and you can see, and then the balloon sticks because the positive charges are being attracted to this, and it's pushing those negative. It's polarizing, so it's pushing those negative charges. We have a Dr. Robles over here going, ah, oh, we've got a wonderful demonstration just in 310 alpha where you can see this for real. Um, but it's messy and it hurts. Okay, this doesn't. Right. I'm kidding. I'm, but you can get shocked by some of our things. Over here. All right. Now, okay, so there, you've got, you got, the, uh, you got uh, a general view of the transfer of charges. Okay, so let's go back. Oh, no. Sorry. There we go. Ah, here we go. Oh, we're, I'm going to have to shut up here in about eight minutes. All right. Now. Ooh, that's not good. That's even worse. That's good. That, that, hey, there. That's the combination I was after. All right, now, so that you can still kind of see this. All right, now, during any process... The net charge, all right, law of conservation of electric charge. During any process, the net electric charge of an isolated system remains constant. You will have one of these problems too, okay? You'll have one of these problems. This is one of your homework problems also, all right? In fact, so like charges repel and unlike charges attract. In fact, let's do one here. In fact, let's, let's do one so you can kind of get used to it. Going through it, and then we'll go back to the quizzes, and uh, we'll take the quiz. This is way certain ink works. I didn't want to see that. Now, here's how we explain conductors and insulators. All right, this is, and this is where we'll kind of stop today. All right, just like heat flow. In fact, things that are good conductors of heat are usually good conductors of electricity. All right, and those things that are good insulators of heat are also good insulators of electricity, like glass around. They used to use a lot of glass in the initial days of making power, because of power lines and everything, because it's a good insulator, okay? All right. And in chapter 21, I think, or 22, we'll get to transformers and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to bring in my friend Mike Kelly, who is an engineer at um, Kansas City Power and Light, and he's going to teach you all about things like that. And... Um, just the other day, my wife got a lesson in it because we had a squirrel run into our transformer outside our house. Bang! Kind of, no more squirrel. And we also had to reset all our clocks. But anyway, all right. Um, so materials that conduct electric charge poorly are called electric insulators. And charge moves, just like we saw with old John Travolta, negatively charged object 
moves to a positive charge object. All right? When we get to All right, so here we go. This is charging by contact and by induction. This is kind of what we did on the quiz. Um, got an ebonite rod. All right? And it's negatively charged. All right? And we put it on Now, what they're doing is they're putting it on, they're attaching it to this neutrally charged sphere. Okay? And so these electrons go, ooh, ooh, there's positive charges here. Let's run to them and hook up. And the positive charge is going, hey, I've already got a buddy that's an electron. And it's attached to me. So they just kind of hang out along the outside. And so now it's negatively charged. OK? And what, at this point now, what's, what's the charge on the ebonite rod? It's neutral. It's given up its negative charge. OK? There might be a little bit of, oops. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to smack like that. But anyway, um, it's, it, it might have a little bit of negative charge, but not much. Okay? Now, um, now here is charging by, here we're going to charge this ebonite rod by um, induction. In other words, it's not going to actually touch. Okay? It's not going to actually touch. Okay? So here we go. Comes up. It's negatively charged. Okay, and we put it on this metal sphere. Now, what happens to those positive charges? Well, actually what happens is the positive charges don't move, but these negative charges move away from it. It becomes polarized, all right? And so now, but if we attach a grounding wire to it, if we attach a grounding wire to it, then these negative charges come running out here to the ground, okay? And so... This is almost like a uh, by contact thing. So the negative charges go running down into the ground and disperse out throughout the ground because they, they, there's these positive charges down here. And what's left is the positive charges up here. So that is charging by uh, induction. You've got to kind of hook that grounding wire to get those negative charges to flow out of there. Okay? So let's take a look at, um, let's do two last things for class here. Um, Let's take a look at one of your homework problems. Um, and, and we'll go back to the, uh, what we'll do is we'll go back to Wiley Plus and um, since I've, ha, there it is. Cool. I can log on and we'll, we'll do the quiz again. But first we'll do a homework problem, then we'll do the quiz, and then we'll be done for the day. And you don't have to go to lab today. Okay. Is that working? Yep. Want to go to this one? Now that we're there. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is turn off the projector. Then we'll come back to it. I'm testing the full, full capability of our videotaping skills here. Okay, let's take a look. Here's one of your homework problems. We'll just do it together here in class so that we can, one, I want to see what it's going to look like when uh, it's videotaped. And two, I want to uh, just think we might need to do it. All right, here's the question. Let's do problem number um, two. Just go ahead and start with it. All right, it says that a plate carries a charge of negative 3.0 coulombs. So Q of the plate, Q of the plate equals negative 3.0 micro coulombs. All right? And it says while a rod carries a charge, Q of the rod, is equal positive 2. Why no? Micro coulombs. Okay? Now then, 
It says, how many electrons must be transferred from the plate to the rod so that both of the objects have the same charge? How many must go from the plate to the rod so that both of them have the same charge? Any ideas? You don't need to convert the micros just yet. Here's the, only, here's the way I do these problems. I just go, OK, I got a ball. It's got three negatives. And it's going to be touched to this one. It's going to have a positive and a positive. OK? Oh, I'm actually doing a different problem. I'm doing the problem that if we connect them, what's going to be the net charge when they come out to be the same. That's not a bad problem either. OK, well, what's our total charge here? What's our total charge that we have here? Negative 1 half. Now, a weird algebraic thing is when you add them up, or negative 1. I'm sorry. Did I say negative 1 half? Yeah. yeah. I've lost my mind there for one minute. All right? It happens every once in a while. But people catch me. All right? So it's negative 1. All right? A weird thing that happens, though, is um, algebraically, you can add these two up and divide by two. And that's how much charge flows from one. Now, if you think about it, you're going, okay, well, if one goes from over here to over here, then those two are like that. You're going, well, wait a minute. That's still not right. And then one goes from over here to over here. You still got a half. They're still not balanced, are they? So what caused it to be, let's take a half of, half of that microcoulomb. And now they're balanced. And that's how much would actually have to transfer. In other words, um, would that be right? Oh, yeah, you got to add the, the, the uh, yeah, OK. All right, so for them both to have the same charge, how many electrons went over there? Two and a half. Did you see that? Let's try it again. I was doing it right. Let's try it again. Got three negatives and two positives. And so to get this, so to get them to both have the same charge, for them to both have the same charge, then one goes over, are you erasing? One goes over, erase him. Now there's still, he's at zero and he's at negative one. Right? They still, and so far negative two has gone over. And so we still need another half to go over to make it even. So we put a negative one half over there and a negative one half over here. Ah, so then we add that negative one half, and so we add up, we come up with negative 2.5 microcoulombs. Now that wasn't the question. The actual question was, um, how many electrons? That's how much charge went across. So we've got Q equals NE. OK, Q equals NE. And so we go, oh, we can just take um, negative 2.5. Now, here's when you need to do this, times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. When you, go to the, when you get to this stage, you have to get out of your micro coulomb thing there and actually put in the power equals N, which is what we're after. Times, anybody remember what the charge for an electron is? Ooh, nine point, I'm here, 9.01 times 10 to the negative 31. That's what? That's its max. What's its charge? Right, and you're going to get sick of that. But you need to know that's just one of those things, you know, you just need to know. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Okay, and that's negative because our number is always going to be positive. So now we, to solve for n, we just take 2.5, negative 2.5 times 10 to 
times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 equals n. Now your numbers, when you do your homework problem, will be different. Okay. All right. Good, 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 good. Now, let's go, let's shut this, let's turn this back on again. I probably should have done the quiz, then the problem. But not that I ever have a plan before I start anyway. So let's go back and let's retake the quiz. Let's see how we do. Are they earning their pay back there? Dr. Robel, are they earning their pay back there? <laughs> I thought so. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at this quiz. If I leave it like that, can you see? Like you don't have to come up and sit on the floor. Is everything fine? Who, who was it that came up and sat on the floor? Oh, if I leave it like, if I leave the room like this, can you see? It was just the like font was too small. It was to the lighting. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. I need to keep that in mind. We're going to go back to that font, though. Um, here we go. So here, here we are. Um, chapter 18. Let's see. Is that the actual book chapters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the actual book chapters. And, and you actually have this, you, you, you have access to all this stuff, OK? Um, here we go. Assessment number one. I think we looked at these three right here, two, three, and four, right? Is this the first one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. So each of the three objects carries a charge, and I'm going to Put myself out there. I'm going to answer these questions along with you all. Each of these three objects, as the drawing shows, objects A and B attract each other, and objects C and A also attract each other. Which one of the following statements concerning B and C is true? Well, I know they're not going to attract each other. I'm going to guess that they're going to repel each other. That's going to be my guess. Check answer. Great, yes. All right, good. Semester starting off good. If that had been wrong, I would have. Did y'all get that one? Feeling, feeling good? All right, let's go on to the next problem. Let's go to this one. OK. A positively charged ebonite rod is brought close to a small ball. The rod does not touch the ball. Ooh, that sounds like a little induction thing, which is made from a conducting material. The ball is electrically neutral, though. Which one of the following statements is true? The rod attracts the ball, the rod repels the ball, the rod neither attracts nor repels. As the rod is back close to the ball, the force changes from an attractive force to a repulsive force. Which one of these is true, do you think? This one's tricky. Any ideas? Yeah, John. Neither attracts nor repels? That's what I would have said, but I'm going to go with this. I, that's, I, I understand what you're saying because you go, wait a minute, that one's neutral. But remember, the rod is positive. So as it comes in, what's going to happen? But it doesn't touch it. So, so I'm assuming that means it doesn't. Yeah, that means it's induction. Remember the rod, remember the ebonite rod that was positively charged and it got close to that one ball that was neutrally charged? What happened to the electrons? They, they went to the other side. Or it became polarized on that one side. So it actually attracted each other, I think. Let's see. Boy, if that's not right, class dismissed. See you in the fall. Let's see. I think they're going to attract. <laughs> yes! Woo! A positively charged F night rise about close to the, Oh, the ball is electrically neutral. However, it is made from conducting material. That was it. See, so you got to read carefully. Read carefully. Um, and so it can, if it would have been made of wood, there would have been a little polarization of the thing, but not enough to make it attract. But since it's, um, those electrons are free to move, so it's not really polarization that takes place. On a wall, it's polarized. Or a piece of wood, you know, because that would be polarized. But 
with the uh, with a uh, conducting material. That means the electrons. Remember, Southwest Airlines electrons are free to move about that surface. Okay, so they'll move to the other side and it'll attract. All right, last one, last one. Class ran a little bit. I mean, we're we, we're supposed to go to 115 anyway, but um, we had all that syllabus discussion beginning. All right, here we go. Each of two identical objects carries a net charge. The objects are made from conducting material. One of them is attracted to a positively charged ebonite rod, and the other is repelled by the rod. Hmm. Okay, they're made from conducting material. So after the objects are touched together, it is found that they, uh, after the objects are touched together, it's found that they are each repelled by the rod. Okay, how's the rod charged? Oh, it is? What did the rod say? Positive. Yeah, the rod's positive. Okay, and so each of these charges now repel the rod. So what? We know one and two aren't any good because they both would act differently. Initially, one object is positive, and one is with the negative charge having a greater magnitude. Which has the greater magnitude, the positive charge or the negative charge here? The positive charge. And here we go. I'm going to walk it through right here real quick, kind of um, symbolically, what's going on. Okay, because at the end, they both repelled the rod, right? So they had to be, if they repelled the rod, what kind of charge do they have to have, net charge, positive or negative, if they repelled it? Positive. So they both had to have a positive charge. So, but at the, at the beginning, one of the balls, okay, so here I've got this negative charge over here. Here's my ebonite rod, okay, and it's got a positive charge. It's got a bunch of positive charges, okay? So my ball that is positive, what's it going to do? Yeah, they're going to have forces that look like that. They're going to repel each other. But my negative charge ball, what's it going to do? It's going to come in, right. They're going to have forces that look like that. They're going to attract each other. But when I join these two together, when I touch the positive ball, and I'm going to put five charges on it with four negative charges over here. Now what's going to happen? Well, these four negatives are going to come over here and hook up here. You know, you're going to have a little eHarmony.com thing here. These negative charges. Oh, yay. Found my soulmate. Okay. And I've got one positive charge left over, so they both wind up with a half positive and a half positive. So when that ebonite rod comes in contact with them, what's going to happen? They're going to repel each other. Okay? They're going to repel each other. All right. So go ahead and turn that in. 100%. You should, oh, oh, let me see. So let me see if this one is right. I tried to convince you it was. Yes. We're right. Did we have enough tape? We had enough tape. Class is, uh, go ahead and, uh, I don't want your homework problem, uh, but turn in your quiz and you'll all have your first 10 points for your endless summer quiz one out of the way. And we're off and rolling. And I've got to do, I, I know what I'm going to do next time. I'm going to copy these over on a bigger thing so you get bigger font. All right, and if any of you have trouble logging on to Wiley Plus, remember, first assignment to do is Wednesday at noon, you turn into a pumpkin, all right? <laughs>